as opposed to the other way around where I'm living with scarcity. I don't have much in the bank, so I overcompensate by buying garbage to show other people that I'm rich. Hey there, my handsome and pretty little cobras, and welcome back to Cobras and for the Tokyo and you. My name is Mignon Cobra, and I make minimalism videos. So today's video is going to be a Cobra's Guide to Financial Independence. So without further ado, let's just get into the video. Let's get it. Let's go. Ooh. Okay, so today's video is going to be talking about some of my favorite financial independence habits. You guys know that I've been on a fire journey for a period of time now and I'm really good with my money. I'm not claiming to be a millionaire or a financial advisor. Like I'm not. I'm just saying that like I'm really happy with the way that I have managed my money in the past couple years. It has definitely created a lot of good options in my life and I figured you know what I want to share that with you guys because you guys care about money now. Here's my analytics show. You guys my analytics you guys used to be you were 18, 19 but now you guys are like in your 20s and so I guess some of you have graduated. You're working. You realize that money is kind of important. So I think that these money videos definitely resonate with you guys a whole lot more because y'all are grown now <laughs> so i figured you know what let's let's share the wealth let's share the information okay so number one asking yourself where do you park your cash so it is really important to understand the difference between a liability and an asset especially with social media nowadays everybody likes to flex on instagram although maybe now it's tiktok i don't know i don't i don't really use tiktok to be completely honest i already had my fair share of mental health ruining age with instagram i don't need another app to do that for me but essentially it's asking yourself like, like where do you put park your money so money does depreciate with time as unfortunate as it is wouldn't it be nice if we could just put our money away and let it like do its tang i mean technically it does i'm not a financial advisor i'm not here giving anyone any financial tips i think that that is something that you need to do that is your own responsibility but it's kind of asking yourself like where do you put your money do you blow all your money on getting your nails done and doing your makeup and getting your hair extensions like colored like i'm not hating i used to do that too that's why i can talk about these things and like i'm not saying you can't have these things i definitely think you can but you need to have a financial foundation you need to have a healthy financial state of affairs before you have like the little frivolous stuff the frivolous stuff should be treats they shouldn't be necessities it should be the other way around you should take care of your finances you should put money away for a rainy day you should have a sinking fund you should be good with your money and then you can have your little treats and your little luxuries because then it's like yeah you can have them you're being responsible so i feel like you can have your cake and eat it too just make sure your finances are, are in order and for me personally so i'll share what i do right so for me i buy stocks i also put money away i do my best to have a high savings rate and then whatever's left over i spend that and it just creates like for me a, like a world of abundance because i feel like i have a lot of money in the bank so there's an abundance there and at the same time my treats feel even more special because i don't have them often so that also gives me a feeling of abundance as opposed to the other way around where I'm living with scarcity. I don't have much in the bank, so I overcompensate by buying garbage to show other people that I'm rich. Okay, number two, that actually brings us to the next point, which is be rich versus looking rich. So as you climb up the social scale, there is going to be a lot of paradoxes and anomalies. There are very rich people who look rich and are rich, so we're not going to take them into account. We're going to just look at the general population. So looking rich and being rich are actually two opposite behaviors. Behaviors. The quickest way to not having money is to spend your money and I know that sounds so obvious and obviously you don't want to hear advice like just save your money just invest like I know we've all heard that like this is this is not new to anybody but it's just kind of understanding that you don't have to spend all of your money trying to look rich when in reality you know you have no money like it's damaging to you the person who loses at the end of the day is you and I just I don't want that for my little cobra babies obviously I'm not saying you know you can't live your life and you can't have nice things that would make me a hypocrite. I have nice things. But I think at the, at the end of the day, it's just kind of making sure that you do have some wealth, you are wealth building, you are taking care of your finances. That should be your priority as opposed to trying to put on a persona that maybe necessarily is not true, that that's not healthy. And I speak from personal experience. I used to buy fake leather purses, like fake stuff off of like Taobao and AliExpress because I just, I guess financially, I just, I thought like at least if I bought the same stuff that I thought the rich did, then I'd be the same. Although recently as I watched more videos on like, I guess millionaires, they laugh at these type of luxury goods. They're like, this is for the middle class. It's a middle class trap. So I was like, oh damn, I didn't even look rich buying these things. So again, I'm not shaming anybody. I like my nice things too, but I just think it's important to make sure that you are building wealth as opposed to trying to look rich is your priority. Just like make sure the order is correct. <laughs> Okay, number three, investing in wealth and in knowledge. So Will always makes fun of me for always saying that knowledge is power, but knowledge is 
power. So if you guys don't know, I grew up on welfare and financially I shouldn't be where I am given my starting point. But my parents were very educated and my father was a really big advocate for always reading. So I read a lot as a kid and we didn't have cable either. So I guess that kind of helped. I was always at the library, always reading. So I've been frequently told that for my age, I'm very mature, but it's not because I'm mature. I have just accumulated the wisdom of people older than me through books. And that's all that wisdom is. It's just accumulated experience. So you can go times two speed in your own life by grabbing somebody else's 10 year plus of, I guess, wisdom and just downloading it via a book. And honestly, nowadays there's even faster ways of doing it. Like you don't have to even read the book. You can get the spark notes, you can get the audio book, you can get the summary notes. There's just so many ways to quickly install knowledge and knowledge is wealth. Like knowing what to do has half of the game. Like for me, a lot of the things that I have today is because young Nat did a lot of things. Like young Nat started investing 10 years ago. Young Nat decided to pursue med school. Young Nat studied really hard in high school. I know there's a really big movement recently. And honestly, I, I, I was part of that movement too. Where I was like, oh my gosh, like screw university. It's holding you back. Nothing is holding you back. Only you are holding you back. Everything at the end of the day are just tools. To demonize university is to, I guess, piss on your own privilege, if that makes any sense. Not everybody has the privilege to go to university. I almost didn't have the privilege to go to university. I was so low income that I had to apply for OSAP to, in order to be able to go to university. So I think that it is a sign of your own privilege to be able to make fun of the fact that you went to university and it's a waste. I mean, yes, I do think my degree to some degree was kind of a waste, but we're not getting get into that. My point being is that you don't have to have a formal education to have knowledge and wealth. Learning somebody else's experience is going to definitely put your head in life. And, and I think that there's a really good saying out there that I'm rich because I read. And I think that's really important. A lot of people are more than happy. We all believe in abundance. We give away our knowledge for free because we really truly do genuinely believe that creating a better future is giving away the knowledge, giving away the information. So there's a lot of free information out there. You don't have to pay for it. It's available in the library. The richest man in Babylon, Rich Dad Poor Dad, you can pick up a copy from the library. And I mean, granted, yes, I am realizing now that going to the library is also a financial privilege because when I lived in China, there were no libraries for me to go to. You, so you had to pay to go to the bookstore and like I didn't have any money, so it wasn't gonna happen. But I did have the internet and so the internet has definitely opened up the doors where maybe that wasn't the case. But when I didn't have internet, I had the library. So I guess in some ways God has blessed me. I've always had access to information and that's something that I would definitely advocate. Knowledge is power. But that is actually one of the most powerful Powerful things. Populations and masses get controlled by controlling the knowledge because at the end of the day, knowledge is power. So if you want to improve your life, if you want to improve your financial state of being, I definitely recommend picking up some books. Okay, I'm at number uh, four. Speaking of books is a read more. I've realized people are very materialistic. So if you guys didn't know, I have published a book. I published a book. I've actually published a lot of books and I have peppered them out throughout the years. My OG subscribers know that I used to write novels and I have put them up on my channel. If you want to check them out, it's on Wattpad. I love to write and I love to read. And I realized that this must make me a weirdo because most people I realized once I, once I published a minimalist guide to minimalism, I had more people buying my jewelry than I did people having my book. Maybe my book is just not that appealing and I didn't do a very good job of advertising it, but it, it just, it revealed to me and I'm not knocking people, but I just, it revealed to me People are very materialistic. Nobody really cares what's up here. And that was a bit shocking. And I thought that I would be transparent and, and let you guys know that that that's not, at least for me, that's not how I prioritize my life. Like my, the financial state of being where I am is because I've prioritized learning, I've prioritized reading. Reading more has put me ahead versus more jewelry is not gonna put you ahead. I mean, it's gonna put the jeweler <laughs> ahead, but it's not putting you ahead. So I just think it's interesting that be less materialistic and be a little bit more intelligent if you want to improve your life circumstances and your financial circumstances. Okay, and number five, prioritize your health and your wealth over material accumulation. My channel used to come from a scarcity mindset, but my channel now is more about coming from a place of abundance. I'm not saying you can't have material wealth. I definitely do think you should have material wealth so that you know that material wealth is not the most important thing. But with that being said, I do think it's really important to prioritize your health and your wealth. There's a period of time where I didn't put that as the most important thing. I thought that who cares what your body looks like and who cares if you're actually healthy or wealthy, like as long as I have capacity to buy what I wanna buy, like that's the most important thing. But once you no longer have health and you no longer have wealth, you realize how important those things are and no amount of like, I don't know, Gucci shoes in the closet is going to fix that. So for me personally, so I'll just use myself as an example because I can't speak for other people. For me, I feel like I'm 
living my best life when my health is there, when I'm taking care of my body, when I'm eating right, when I'm working out, when I'm journaling, taking care of my mental health, putting in positive vibes, reading, filling my cup, I feel really good. When I'm taking care of my finances by making sure that I'm disciplined and that whatever I make, I put away a certain amount first, I always pay myself first. Since I read Rich Dad Poor Dad when I was 21, I have ingrained in my lifestyle, pay myself first. The bank of NAC gets paid first. Before I pay off my visa, before I pay my rent, before everything, they can scream all they want, NAC gets paid first. Like I work and my money is my money. Now I know that sounds very extreme and maybe a bit selfish and maybe it doesn't resonate with everybody, but for me personally, that is just the life philosophy that I have respected. Is So I know maybe you're thinking, oh, so then I'm not gonna pay off my visa because I paid myself first. No, you should be financially responsible, but the most important person to pay first is you. So that means you're not buying dumb stuff if it means you have to take away from you because you still have to pay the bank and you still need to pay the mortgage you still need to pay off the visa but it's making sure that you have enough to pay you first and then whatever's left over goes to everybody else and then a new pair of Gucci shoes or I guess in my case another pair of Uggs because your girl loves middle-class luxury so I really hope that this video could have been entertaining could have been refreshing could have been just informative because I think that I want the best financial health for my little cobras. I try to be real with my tips. My tips are not like, oh my god, start a drop shipping. Just like get that coin. I just... <laughs> Um, <laughs> easier said than done so I think that sometimes just providing the philosophies and the life principles is the best way to go because that way you can tweak it to your own life while still living in abundance and not a scarcity mindset so I hope that this video could have entertained you and I will see you guys in the next one thanks for watching bye